So I've collected together all my sketches of the gardener model and the drawings that I made in Jock Tamsin's garden. And I have made a start on a couple of thumbnail sketches where I have put two of the figures into one of my chosen settings. And I'm going to demonstrate that. That is really, you know, thumbnail, thumb size. I think it's worth um, keeping this part of the exercise as small as possible because you can quickly execute a thumbnail sketch and start to come to some conclusions about whether you want to pursue this particular arrangement of figures um, as far as uh, a painting, which is what I will do at the end of this demonstration. I'll go from my thumbnail sketch to beginning an oil sketch. So I would aim to use a quarter of an A4 sheet for these thumbnail sketches. And I'm going to put them inside a box. I already talked a bit about the whole idea of these um, garden studies as having an aim um, of identifying a certain structure for your garden and therefore for the setting of your composition. And some of the first um, lines, mm, shapes that I was drawing when I took this particular view of the, the polytunnel and the sort of avenue of uh, posts leading up to the, to the, the, the greenhouse polytunnel. When I started that drawing, um, I felt that I, could, I had found a certain structure, these receding posts, uh, the converging lines of the path, um, tonally, there was this dark area of trees at the back of the garden. And then there was a, a flower bed or a, a vegetable bed of sorts there. So that, that's the kind of structure that I feel I've identified and into which I want to put some figures. And I've got my two drawings of figures here, the chap with the box and the chap raking and I'm going to try some, I'm try a couple of permutations of, of, of them so firstly I think I'll I'll have the man with the box about here I'm using a thin stick of willow charcoal and I'm not pressing too hard but I'm trying to really recreate my um, my figure study with a series of lines. My figure study was done on grey paper with charcoal and chalk. So that actually was a good way of helping me just find a series of outlines that I might eventually fill in. So that is my uh, first figure with his box. He hasn't, he's not quite got a present yet, um, but I won't fill him in. Yes, I will. Maybe I should just fill him in. There we go. He might become a bit more solid. Uh, I think these are things well worth demonstrating. His head's in the wrong place. These things are well worth demonstrating because I think things like smudging some of the filling in that I just did suddenly makes that figure stand out uh, and doing some more of that shading in the background starts to help the background recede a bit and so I get a better idea of that figure occupying that space but what I want to do with the material that I've got here is combine two figures in the setting um, and have a large figure in the foreground and a small figure in the background. And I think I'm going to put this chap who's raking the flower bed up here. We can look through these two posts to see him. And again, following some of the lines that I got in my original drawing, I can get some of that 
more active pose and he's got some sort of implement there. So that, that's the first combination. I think again they might come together a bit more strongly if I restate my setting. So I started fairly tentatively because I want to see that the, the lines and the tonal shapes that I've put down, I want to see that they've, they make sense. And if they do, then um, I can fit some figures in and strengthen that composition. So that's the first possibility. So for the second possibility, I've put the same arrangement, the same linear arrangement down. Um, and I think also it's probably quite good to have something tonal. So I'll get those dark background areas blocked in. And this time I'm going to swap the figures round and have the raking man in the foreground. Something like this. And the box carrying figure in the background. Now I've gone through the process um, of redrawing or, or making new versions. I've done it on a small scale, as I've said, because I think the thumbnail scale is quicker and helps you get a, a fairly quick idea if you're happy with what is produced as, as a, a version. But of course you can use a bit of technology and print print out your drawings and then um, draw on top of them. It works actually quite nicely not only to put charcoal on top of a, a photocopy but actually to put pastel on. Um, and that, that's very handy for for saving you time and uh, probably giving you, well, I was going to say, a more consistent sort of experience of the the material that you're working with. But anyway, that's that's a, another possibility. So you can see that I've worked up um, the first version a bit more. I made these figures a bit more solid, and I developed their setting so that I think they they integrate a bit better with their background. So I'll do the same to my second version. So which do I choose? Um, I'm quite keen on both of them and I'm aware that the more I do to refine the figures and the settings, um, if you like, the better they get. So if, you know, if I don't treat them equally, then, then I might be um, affecting my choice, but I think I'm going to go for this one for the reasons, a number of reasons. Firstly, just the way the structure leads from the big figure up to the small figure and everything goes in that direction. So I think there's a kind of um, natural movement through the composition, which I like. Um, and I was aware, because an aspect of the garden setting with these posts, there are then trees, fruit trees, um, trained along wires. And because of where I've put this figure, those apple trees would be in front. I could possibly move them over there. Uh, that might be a reason. But anyway, I'm going to plumb for this one because uh, of the reasons that I've said. And I'll just make a start on an oil sketch of that. As ever, I think the best way to start the oil sketch is to tint the canvas with a bit of brown made from orange and ultramarine, rub it in with a rag and then really reflect the same process of making this thumbnail sketch by working in, in monochrome, um, working with uh, a finished brush to lay down some of the lines that were initially the structure of the thumbnail sketch and then something more tonal 
could be added. So I'm putting down the garden setting and then I'm going to put in the figures. And I just wanted to get that sense of perspective. So I'm guided by my thumbnail sketch and this monochrome brown painted start can easily be smudged and rubbed out in order to get uh, the, the version that you want if things are, if the figure doesn't fit or other adjustments need to be made along the way, they can be done easily with a bit of smudging and redrawing. And this time, looks like I'm going to get his feet. So there will be much rejoicing. So that's that figure and the other figure. Then I will do a little bit of tonal uh, filling in. Put him right over here. Then I'll do a bit of refining. And then I'll put, put some colour on top. So actually that's a good point to rub out. Let me show you how easily it is. Easy it is just to change. Because I like the proportion there. His feet come down to his waist, you know, so he should be that sort of a size. And whilst everything in the composition leads up to him, he is big enough to be, hopefully to be interesting. The notorious pineapple thief. Okay, so that's how they're gonna be. I'll, I'll just refine that a bit. So I'll begin adding color by working with large areas, the background. I've got my pastel sketch for a bit of reference. And that would be things like this very dark tree uh, background. And actually I extended the polytunnel beyond his arm there because I thought I would like to have, by having that light shape follow through I think it helps its structure again. It holds things together and it, 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 uh, it both recedes and also connects those things um, in front of it. So it's virtually connecting my two figures together with the dark trees above. And then I've made another green for some of the other main areas. So this is where the, the tonal drawing, the brown drawing is helpful because it's helping me identify the different areas. And also the fact that it's dark and neutral will help with the whole business of building up color. But always wise to start with big areas and to get them blocked in and work towards the smaller things. So I, I, for example, wouldn't work on the figures until all of the background is at least loosely blocked in. And I wouldn't work on, say, the faces and hands until I had some of the bigger areas of clothing blocked in as well. Where possible, it can really help with um, each colour. I'm putting a bit of colour into this foreground figure's clothes and you can see with the jumper I tried to have a slightly darker blue and a slightly lighter blue so that's really helpful just for creating a bit of form and for um, modelling. Modelling those figures his black hat might be important And I might do a little bit to his hands. So in conclusion, I might just do a little bit to this head and hands. 
I've gone from my thumbnail sketches to a monochrome start and locking in colour and now uh, perhaps a little bit early but I'm starting to get into some more refinements of my subject and at this last stage I think it's important to to remember or to, to refer yourself to what you were deciding about the choice of composition, about um, what, what to include, what to emphasize, and to be mindful of that as you draw attention to particular parts of the, the, the painting. So the things you wanted to stand out how do you make them stand out now that you're working with colour and detail and refinement? So I didn't do anything to the other figure, but I would go on to that. And then some of these last touches really should have been for a bit later when I was coming to those conclusions about what to emphasise. OK, so see you soon.